muscles of tongue are derived from occipital somites, palatopharyngeal arch, palatoglossal arch, and otic somites. So, uh, if we just try to understand the development of the tongue, so the development of the tongue uh, occurs from the four pharyngeal arch, although there is uh, from first to uh, first, second, third, and fourth, till fourth, we have four pharyngeal arches working to contribute in the development of tongue. So, actually, what happens there is first pharyngeal arch, and in this, you have actually two lingual swellings. and tuberculum impar that forms the anterior two-third of the tongue. It forms the anterior two-third of tongue. Then you have second pharyngeal arch. And in the second pharyngeal arch, actually this particular contribution is almost minimal and it disappears at foramen cecum. Disappears at foramen cecum. So still there is minimal contribution from second pharyngeal arch. Then we have the third pharyngeal arch and this forms the posterior one third of the tongue. The posterior one third of tongue. And then we have the fourth pharyngeal arch and this fourth pharyngeal arch leads to the development of the epiglottis and the posterior most part of the tongue posterior most part of tongue so these are the things that are derived from the four pharyngeal arches and actually second pharyngeal arch has minimal contribution so sometimes you can exclude those in the options and choose the options accordingly right so yes now uh, if we just discuss the tongue epithelium the tongue epithelium now there are several parts which are developed for example at the beginning the whole tongue is endodermal whole tongue is endodermal it is at beginning right then any external opening lined by surface ectoderm and that forms the anterior two-third of the tongue okay so there will be surface ectoderm and that will be forming your anterior two-third of tongue then you have at sulcus terminalis sulcus terminalis this is a b v-shaped sulcus that divides the anterior two-third and posterior one-third of the tongue okay so here you will have the ectoderm and endodermal junction there will be ectoderm and endodermal junction then you have the posterior one third of the tongue posterior one third of tongue and this uh, posterior one third of the tongue is predominantly endodermal okay so this is about the tongue epithelium at beginning whole tongue is endodermal but yes anterior two third of the tongue becomes the surface ectoderm at sulcus terminalis, there will be junction between the ectoderm and the endoderm and posterior one third of the tongue, it will be endodermal mostly, right? Now, uh, the tongue is basically derived from three germ layers. It is derived from three germ layers. So, you have seen, yes, the tongue epithelium is going to have ectodermal as well as endodermal uh, layers then what is going to form the mesodermal layer right so what is going to form the mesoderm component and the mesoderm component is formed by the connective tissue and muscles of the tongue muscles of the tongue right and these muscles as well as the connective tissue these are going to come from occipital somites it is going to come from occipital somite and these are derived from occipital somites these are basically post otic myotome okay post otic myotomes now there is something that comes from pre otic myotome that is your eyeball that can be an extra question which we have discussed here now 
the connective tissue generally is derived from pharyngeal arches 1 3 and 4 so the connective tissue that will be coming it will be derived from first third and fourth pharyngeal arch okay two doesn't have any contribution right now uh, this is the whole uh, thing which we have discussed about this quickly going through the key concept occipital somites 4 5 which give rise to the muscles of the tongue and are supplied by hypoglossal nerve so answer to this question if you go Muscles of the tongue are derived from, yes, option 1, that is your occipital somites.